All right, so I was asked about the last question in the review, which is a great question to go over because it's going to cover a lot of things that we've done this unit, and you may see one like it on the test. On the test, you will definitely see something that involves stoic, where I give you a mass of something. It may not be this complicated. This is going to have a stoic ratio involved, but it's fair game. This could be on the test for sure. So these are the highlights from the last question on the review. 620 grams of this calcium hydrogen sulfite. 250 mils of water, I'm asking you is it acidic or basic, then we'll find the pH and percent ionization. Alright, the first thing that we can address very quickly is this question of whether the solution will be acidic or basic. So we just have to compare Ka and Kb. Okay, I found Ka pretty quickly. Um, just so we're clear, this dissociates into HSO3 and calcium ions. Um, so I find HSO3, it's right here, there's Ka. To find Kb, find HSO3 in the base column, and then you do Kw divided by that, which I've done. Okay, Ka is greater than Kb, so the solution is acidic. All right, the question may ask, what's the ionization formula it would look like that? Hydrogen sulfite ionizing water into hydronium. Okay, so let's get to the good parts now, uh, finding the pH. So to do that, we're going to have to find the hydronium concentration. Um, this is the ionization. We need this. Okay. We're, we're going to need to find the concentration of HSO3. We'll get it from here. But we have to be aware of the dissociation not being one-to-one. -one. Okay. So when this breaks apart in water, we get calcium ions and two hydrogen sulfide ions. So with the mass of calcium hydrogen sulfide, we can find this concentration, but the HSO3 concentration will be double. So let's go ahead and find the number of moles of calcium hydrogen sulfide. We have 6.8 grams. Molar mass, we got some work to do. So i got my periodic table here. Calcium has got a molar mass of 40.08. Okay, then there's going to be two hydrogens. There's going to be two sulfurs. Sulfur's molar mass, 32.07. And there are six oxygens. Okay, so my division statement doesn't look so pretty, but it's going to get the job done. Okay, so my math, I got a value of zero point. 0336 moles and this is of calcium hydrogen sulfide all right so the number of moles of hydrogen sulfide will be double that you can double it now or you can double it after you find the concentration maybe i'll do the concentration first so the concentration of calcium hydrogen sulfide we take this value that we just found divide it by the volume of water which was 250 mils Okay, so this is, again, for calcium hydrogen sulfide. But we have two hydrogen sulfides for every one of these. So the concentration of hydrogen sulfide, which is what we actually want, is going to be double that. Okay. So, we need this, okay? This will be the value we use with Ka to find the H3O concentration, okay? We've done that a whole bunch. I know you guys are really good at it. So, Ka 
is going to be the H3O concentration squared over the HSO3 concentration. All right. Ka I've written over here. It was six point three times ten to the eight. Multiplied by what we just got, and take the square root to get our H three O concentration. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, once we have that, getting the percent ionization and the pH is really easy. I'll just do the pH real quick here. It's negative log. Okay, when I do that, I get a pH of 3.9. Okay, for percent ionization, that's the H3O concentration divided by your weak acid concentration and we'll multiply that by 100 we'll write that in there times 100 times 100 let's see what we get I get 0.048%. All right, so there's a lot going on in this question. If it was on the test, I usually just stick to pH. You'll have a percent ionization somewhere on there, I'm sure, but not in the same question as finding the pH of something amphiprotic like this. But if you followed along and can do this, if you did it correctly already, you're in good shape because this encompasses a lot. All right, I would say the most tricky step or the one that is easiest to forget is that the dissociation yields two hydrogen sulfites for every one of these guys. So if you didn't double this, you would get a different answer, but you still know what you're doing. Just be aware that you may have to use, uh, apply molar ratio to the dissociation.